Well, hello there again, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Grab your cup of coffee and an umbrella because it's raining here today because we're talking about car stereos and electrical issues. So grab your cup of coffee and your umbrella because I'm Pauly and this is Pauly's Power Hour. So as you can see behind me, I have my trusty Trans Am kit. And I've been having a kind of a, a weird issue with the stereo. Where as I'm driving, I notice my rear channel and my subwoofer cut out. And then when I look up at the voltmeter, it's pegged like the capacitor I have is back feeding the uh, charging system. And I'll show you how I have this system set up. So 12 inch sub, capacitor, Amplifier. This amplifier runs the two 6x9s in the sail panels, and then the head unit itself runs the two channels up front. Okay, so I guess we should start with a capacitor. Why do you need a capacitor? What is a capacitor? So let's start with the what. A capacitor is a device that stores electric charge. Why is this important? Well, well let's go to the board. So I did up a little, a little doodle, okay? So, kit's alternator puts out, it's a 12 volt system at 108 amps. Most new cars have way more amps than that, like 140, 160, but in kit's case, we're gonna use 108 amps, which is what the alternator has, right? So the way you find uh, amperage, which is designated by I, okay? So E is electricity, or voltage, which is 12 volts, and then P is power. So I already went and figured out the headlamps, they draw 11 amps, parking lights, six amps, the dash lights draw three amps, and then the scanner lights, I know someone's gonna be a wise aleck, draws two amps when it runs. Now the stereo amplifier is an 800 watt amp. 800 watts divided by 12 volts gives you 67 amps. Okay, it's actually 66.666 repeating, but we don't like that number, so 67, we're gonna round up. Now, what does that mean? That means that every single time, say I do have a really good uh, bass hit, right? When that bass hits, that 67 amps, that boom, hits the, the charging system all at once. And it was a, really a problem in the late 90s, early 2000s, and I kind of think it went out of style when everybody you know, discovered capacitors. But you see a car driving down the road and their headlights would dim, boo, 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 whenever the bass would hit. And that's what's happening. That 67 amps is just, bam, shocking the charging system, drawing that power away from the charging system, which is not good for your alternator, not good for your battery, right? So the capacitor stores a charge, goes in line with the battery. So battery, fuse, capacitor, capacitor to amplifier. So when the amplifier and the subwoofer hit, boom, it draws that voltage from the current from the capacitor, right? And it leaves your charging system to be nice and flat. So the battery, the charging system, charges the capacitor, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. And just like uh, a bank, a storage bank is basically what it is, when your base hits, it draws from the capacitor. Okay, so I went on Amazon. Of course I went on Amazon, right? And I picked up this capacitor. Two and a half farad, which farad is just the unit of measurements for capacitance, and 2,500 watts at 12 volts. 2,500 watts divided by 12 gives us 208 amps. So that means that that piddly 67 amps, when my base hits, boom, is gonna be drawn from that 200 plus from that capacitor. And it's gonna keep my charging system nice, even, and flat. Kit's headlights are gonna be shiny. Going down the road, my base is gonna be crisp and clear which, you know, I don't really, in my age now, I don't really boom music, but I just like it to sound good. So let's unbox this thing and then see what we got here. So this is by Soundbox. And the reason I went with this one is I like it has a digital display. So it's gonna tell me uh, voltage for this thing. And of course it does come with uh, a piece of cardboard 
comes with some destructions and it comes with hardware tools and a resistor. Now, real quick, safety, 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 safety. When you put a capacitor in line with your charging system, you have to charge it first. So how can you do that? Well, this capacitor just so happened to come with a resistor to do so. But normally what I do whenever I put a capacitor in for somebody is just take your old regular every run of the the mill average everyday test light, 12 volts. You hook it to the positive and then you charge the capacitor that way, right? Instead of hooking it to the negative for it to light up when you hit uh, power, it's going to just bridge and you're going to charge it through the light bulb, which is a load. But this comes with a resistor, which is kind of nice, right? Um, it does look fairly fancy and kind of nice, right? It's light, nice and light. And it's basically the same mounting as the one that's in there. A little bit smaller. This is a one farad and this is a two and a half farad, right? So this is gonna go right here. It's actually gonna fit pretty nicely. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get some tools and get to taking this thing apart, swapping this out, and I'll show you all the good stuff you gotta do when you do this. The instructions. Um, it's kind of weird that they open the opposite way they usually would, but whatever. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Energy storage device. Yep, yep, yup. All right. Um, all right, so I guess installation is what we're going to look at first. Install the capacitor as close as possible to your amplifier right next to it. No problem. The ideal location is one which allows for short wiring runs. Cool. Capacitor can be mounted in any position using the brackets provided. Care should be taken to ensure that the venting plug on top of the capacitor is unobstructed. Okay. Uh, keep power wire as short as possible. Amplifiers, battery supply cable. Um, ground cable should also be a short. Yep. Good clean ground. Uh, above connections, big cables. Yep, got it. And then after installing okay so this is for power up procedures we're going to go over this after we install it so let me grab my and let's go do some damage all right so first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that there are no that there's no charge left in this capacitor so i'm going to take my Test light on the negative. I'm gonna bridge it to the positive. There's no light. This is already discharged. Now, if you come back up here to the front, all right, so the kit's battery, I have a fancy uh, big, big fuse, big cable, all right? And that goes to the back. Um, I do need to rework all of this. That's coming next. We get a really nice distribution block for all this and we're gonna go from there. So as you can see, I already have it disconnected. So I am not feeding any power to the back. So this is essentially isolated from the rest of the car, right? So first I'm gonna take my ground off. This is kind of nice because I already have everything hooked up. But if you want to run your wires, um, you always want to run your power wires up one side and your audio wires up the other. And what happens is you get electromagnetic interference and you'll hear a hum in your stereo, okay? So if you're doing this, so for the first time, I would run, usually my rule of thumb is I run power up this side and I run audio up this side. And it just keeps the two separated and it's nice and neat. They don't run next to each other, so. But this wire goes right to the floor. Uh, when I change the carpet out in here, I, um, I actually cut a hole for the ground to go through and it's to a bare metal spot on the, the chassis of the car. So, and it's a nice short run of wire. So I got that going for me too, which is nice. Alright, 
So the old capacitor removed. This is the feed to the amplifier right here. This is the feed from the battery. This is ground right to the chassis. Looking at this, you can see the switch, the, the sides are actually reversed on this where I had negative or positive on this side, negative on this side. Hmm. Interesting. So I had to switch my cables. No big deal. All right. So I got this where I want it to be. Um, this is oh, middle of the road between the two. I think this is going to look fine in here. So go ahead and get these screws in here, get this thing staked down. Now they do recommend, apparently, if you look at the instructions here, they do recommend a distribution block. I don't have one of those yet. But when I do, what's probably going to happen is the cap is going to move down a little bit. The distribution block is going to go above it. And then ipso facto, there go my lines. But for now, this is going to be electrically the same. Okay. So we come here to power up after installing, according to the instructions, follow these instructions for powering up and charging the capacitor. This procedure is extremely, extremely important to perform and eliminates the possibility of damage to the capacitor, battery, and other audio devices. All right, connect the ground cable. Done. Temporarily attach the resistor supplied with the capacitor to the power cable using electrical tape to secure the connection. Okay, so let me grab some electrical tape. Now this is what comes from the battery. So that is what's going to be live. All right, uh, holding the power cable securely, place the free end of the resistor on the positive terminal of the capacitor while this is occurring. The status LED will be illuminated and the red decimal point will flicker, indicating that the system is charging the capacitor. After 5 to 20 seconds, the lamp will dim and the capacitor is charged. When the capacitor is fully charged, the decimal point will no longer flicker and the display will show the DC voltage of the car charging system. Remove the tape, detach the resistor from the power cable, and attach the power cable securely to the positive capacitor terminal. Put the resistor in a safe storage location as you will need it in the future. Alright, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the, um, the fuse. All right, the fuse is hooked up. And just to verify, I'm going to put that on that. I'm going to touch that there. And as you see, it lights up. All right, I have power there. Cool. Right, so let's go ahead and do this power procedure. Of course, the resistor is getting warm. And it says 10.5. So what's going to have to happen now is I'm going to have to whip this thing off here, plug both these terminals in, and get this tightened down. So here we go. And three, two, one. All right, well, here's something I didn't think of. I need a washer. So obviously now this reads zero, so I don't think it has a good charge to it. But I'm curious now as to whether or not and it does it does the exact same thing as a resistor so usually the way I charge these is um, I go up there and I just do it to the battery and when the light goes out is when you know it's charged but with this i have this handy led display here i know there's more voltage than this so but i think this is going to be safe enough to uh to hook up the bolt so so i guess one thing you'll get to see here is a cold start from kit I got things charging in here just because I've got uh, cars and coffee in the morning. I'll just reach in, make sure he's in neutral.
that you're unfortunately not going to be able to hear because I don't want to be demonetized. There we have it. So one of the reasons I chose this particular capacitor is it does have circuitry involved. This, the old capacitor was like a dumb capacitor. It just gave and took, gave and took, gave and took until it finally took a dump, right? This one here, uh, when connected to power, the capacitor is generally in standby mode. If the voltage drops below the normal level, the capacitor will automatically turn on, ensuring a stable voltage and current is provided to the connected amplifier. Although the usual concern which motivates a user to install the capacitor system is voltage drops due to a powerful connected amp producing loud bass signals, other automotive equipment and accessories can also cause this. In any case, the capacitor will help ensure stable voltage for your entertainment system. And that's what we want, stable voltage. Now, I have done other things to Kit's charging system which I've had to fix over time. Oh man, look at that sky. Pause for a minute and take a look at the sky. Isn't that beautiful? All right, cool. Moving on. So, capacitor's in, it's charged. Um, yeah, and we're happy. And now you guys know why you want a capacitor in your stereo system. Even if you have a little amp and a little sub, I would put one in. It doesn't have to be a huge one, a little one, right? Um, and yeah, it's great. So I hope you learned something. Hope you had some fun. Hope you enjoyed your coffee. And I hope you enjoyed that sky I just showed you, because that's pretty darn nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up here. Got all this to clean up. Put T-tops back in place because I'm going to Cars and Coffee in the morning. I'm sorry, caffeine and octane. And I'm going to tap the T-tops off when we go. So, yeah, that's all there is. So, that being said, go out there, work on your car, put a good stereo in it because tunes are always good. So get out there, do something, be nice to each other, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff, recommend this to your friends, tell them how much fun you have watching these videos, and as always, you guys keep it between the ditches, and you come back and see me.